Memory. It's the key to our identity. Without memory, we are nothing. It's who we are. And memory hackers. Right now. This is the second part of a four-part series on the New American Bible, or NAB. The first video is linked down below in the notes section. In his encyclical, Mediator Day, Pope Pius XII restated an ancient Catholic belief that lex serende lex credende, the law for prayer is the law for faith. The Church has always believed that how we pray affects what we believe. The Gospels and the readings read at Mass is how we pray and they affect how we believe. But what if the readings at Mass were tainted with translations favoring Protestant theology? What if the Bibles we use in our homes have footnotes questioning the historicity of the sayings and events in Scripture? Well, that affects the way we pray, and that would certainly affect the way we believe. As we established in the last installment, the NAB is plagued with these very same problems. For example, in the Dewey Reims Bible, which is the translation English-speaking Catholics have used for centuries, from that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the ancients and scribes and chief priests, and be put to death, and the third day rise again. However, for this verse the NAB footnote says, neither this nor the later two passion predictions can be taken as sayings that, as they stand, go back to Jesus himself. However, it is probable that he foresaw his mission would entail suffering, and perhaps death, but was confident that he would ultimately be vindicated by God. So the NAB footnote is outrageously saying that Jesus didn't say what is attributed to him in the Gospel. We really don't know who wrote this footnote because the NAB was put together under a cloud of anonymity, but they wrote this without any authority at all. On the other hand, in a dogmatic encyclical, Pope Leo XIII said, it is absolutely wrong and forbidden either to narrow inspiration to certain parts only of Scripture or to admit that the sacred writer has erred. Nevertheless, here's another example of the NAB doing just that in the Gospel according to Luke. This is when the Blessed Mother speaks the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. The Chaloner note says, shall call me blessed. These words are a prediction of that honor which the church in all ages should pay to the Blessed Virgin. Let Protestants examine whether they are any way concerned with this prophecy. So, what does the NAB footnote have to say about this verse? It actually suggests that Mary never even said the Magnificat, and that it was a literary device used by St. Luke. There are some more bad translations in the NAB. For example, in the Dewey Reims Bible, it says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto the remission of sins. The NAB footnote nonsensically says, Many does not mean that some are excluded, but it is a Semitism designating the collectivity who benefit from the service of the One, and is equivalent to all. Why is this bad? Because it legitimatizes neo-universalism, which seems to be something of a fad among Catholics and Protestants nowadays. And we'll be doing a video on that very troublesome topic in the future. I don't want it. As we noted in the last video, the NAB was developed in concert with Protestants, and as a result, there is a definite and very noticeable Protestant slant in the translations. For example, in the Dewey Reims Bible it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. However, the NAB translates that as, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The young woman, pregnant and about to bear a son, shall name him Emmanuel. So instead of translating to virgin, it uses the phrase young woman. And to make matters worse, the NAB footnote actually acknowledges that the Septuagint, the translation incidentally favored by Jesus Christ and the Apostles, 
use the Greek word for virgin. However, nonetheless, the NAB translators, like Protestants, seem to have rejected the Septuagint and instead used the term young woman. Another translation showing Protestant influence on the NAB is the Gospel according to St. John. In the Dewey Reims Bible it says, And the wine failing, the mother of Jesus saith to him, They have no wine. And Jesus saith to her, Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour is not yet come. Now note that Jesus is asking what concern it is to the both of them. And the Chaloner notes explain this. These words of the Savior spoken to his mother have been understood by some commentators as harsh. They're not considering the next following verse. Whatsoever he shall say to you, do ye, which plainly shows that his mother knew of the miracle he was about to perform, and that it was at her request that he wrought it. Besides the manner of speaking the words as to the tone, and the countenance shown at the time, which could only be known to those who were present, or from what had followed, for words indicating anger in one tone of voice would be understood quite the reverse in another. Instead of Jesus asking his mother what it had to do with both of them, the NAB says, How does your concern affect me? Making it sound as if Jesus rebuked his mother, which is inconsistent with the character of Jesus, but it is consistent with Protestant theology. I don't want it. In the last installment, I solicited viewers with their thoughts as to problems with the NAB. And Daniel Pan was kind enough to point out Genesis 3.15, which says in the Dewey Reims version, I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed, and she shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie and wait for her heel. Pope Pius IX and a dogmatic bull interpreted this verse. The fathers and the writers of the church, in quoting the words, I will put enmities between you and the women, between your seed and her seed, taught that his most blessed mother, the Virgin Mary, was prophetically indicated, just as Jesus, the mediator between God and man, assumed human nature, blotted the handwriting of the decree that stood against us, and fastened it triumphantly to the cross. So, the most holy Virgin, united with him, by a most intimate and indissoluble bond, was with him and through him, eternally at enmity with the evil serpent, and most completely triumphed over him, and thus crushed his head with her immaculate foot. So Catholics believe that it is the Blessed Mother who crushes the head of the serpent. But as Daniel Pan points out, the King James Bible substitute his for her. But how does the NAB translate it? The NAB says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head, while you strike at their heel. The NAB seems to be trying to harmonize Catholic belief with the King James Bible. As Daniel Pan points out, her is changed to their, but oddly heel remains singular, and not the plural heels. So. Protestants helped develop the NAB. It's approved by the Episcopal Church for Episcopalians. For all intents and purposes, the NAB is a Protestant Bible. But is this a problem? According to the Catechism of Pope St. Pius X, why does the Church forbid Protestant Bibles? Answer: The Church forbids Protestant Bibles because either they have been altered and contain errors, or not having her approbation and footnotes explaining the obscure meanings, they may be harmful to the faith. And then the Catechism continues. What should a Christian do who has been given a Bible by a Protestant or by an agent of the Protestants? Answer. A Christian to whom a Bible has been offered by a Protestant or an agent of the Protestants should reject it with disgust because it is forbidden by the Church. If it was accepted by inadvertence, it must be burnt as soon as possible or handed off to the parish priest. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. We'll be back again within a week with the third part of this series, but in the meantime, please pray for the church.